Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is wind simulation in RWind 2, um, modeling, wind load generation, and documentation. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Global Software. I've been working for 12 years for Global Software. And yeah, I will be the moderator today. Maybe yeah, I say some some words about my work. Yeah, I I'm responsible for the website, the German and English webinars, customer projects, and so on. Yeah, and I will also uh, answer your questions together with Andreas Niemeyer and Stefan Hoffmann will do the presentation, but they can introduce themselves. Okay, thanks, Andreas. So my name is Stefan Hoffmann, and I'm working uh, for Global since 2020. And uh, I'm mainly uh, doing customer support, answering your questions uh, via email or telephone. And uh, I'm also involved in the development of form finding, uh, membrane structures, and as well, a wind simulation. And today I will be the main speaker of this presentation, uh, and I will uh, hand over to Andreas. Andreas, it's your turn. Can you introduce yourself? No, sorry, micro was off. <laughs> Hello, okay. my, my name was, uh, is Andreas Niemeyer. Um, I'm working for Blueboard, I think, up to uh, 16 years now. I'm responsible for the product engineering. Um, I'm taking care about almost, not almost, but many wishes. And additional, I take care about the wind simulation and form finding applications. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams that the attendees can see the full screen. Yeah, for all the people who attend the webinar the first time, you can show or hide the control panel on the right side of your screen. And if you want to enter a question, yeah, just enter the question here and we will answer you. If you don't get an answer, uh, during the webinar, because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email questions to info at global.com. To the agenda today, yeah, at first, uh, Stefan will give an overview of the new features in our Wind 2.02 Pro. Then he will do a wind analysis in Rwind Pro without using RFM6. Then in the next step, a wind analysis in Rwind Pro in connection with RFM6. And yeah, he will give a prospect what we uh, schedule to integrate in our wind in the future. Okay, then I hand over the screen to Stefan and he can start with his presentation. All right, so thanks Andreas. So today it should be already working that you can see my screen. Yes, hopefully. Okay, so then I will continue with the next slide. So I have prepared a PowerPoint presentation for you, uh, which will sum up the main new features of Avent 2.02 Pro. So this will be an overview for you and you will then be able later on to download the PDF file and to double check it if you are interested in the main features. And I did also contribute the website links into the slides uh, to our online manual. So mainly we are not working uh, with a printed document file as a manual, but uh, you will get the chance to visit our website and to search for the help and also the manual on the website. So this is uh, only a list of new features. Uh, so it's just a selection. There will be some or there were, were more features. So we added a context sensitive help. So you can just hit the F1 key on the keyboard and this will directly open your website browser and you will be redirected to the topic of the dialogue you're checking at the moment and you will then find various information of this topic. 
Uh, moreover, we also added a uh, batch processing, so you can just create your models. You do not have to click and calculate them uh, one by one, but you can save time. So if you are curious uh, in doing some batch calculation and to compare different wind speeds or whatever on a single file, you just have to save the file under a new name and then you can just run your 10 example files in the batch calculation while doing some other projects or whatever you want to do, drink a coffee. Um, last but not least, uh, we, I will later on show you the new graphic model editor and also a model library was added into this version. So the first new feature I want to talk about on the slides are the permeable surfaces. So these are surfaces with a pressure condition uh, where you can then simulate a pressure drop on the backside of the surface to reduce the wind speed because you have there are some textile membrane or something which is not fully closed but also not fully open. And then you can simulate it. I will go into detail on the next slide. Uh, we did also add some load factors for zones. So you can now um, modify the loads directly in Airwind. And if you're then using them in RFM, they will be increased or reduced by these load factors you are um, editing into the model. So this will save you a lot of time. So you do not have to create your own loads in RFM, but you can then already have the uh, reduced or extended loads in RFM 6. Uh, we did add some point clouds. So this is a preview picture on the right of a tube uh, where you can also track flowing particles in the in the analysis, so in the transient flow analysis. So you can have a clue on where the wind is coming from. It's also available then for streamlines and uh, where the wind is going to. So it's a quite good tool to follow uh, your wind particles. I will have, of course, an example file later on. Uh, the next feature is the convergence criterion. So currently, uh, we uh, stop the calculation after a certain drop of pressure. So if the difference to the latest iteration is on a certain kind of a value, then the calculation will stop giving you then the results. Uh, and since this is not suitable for every stationary calculation, we added some new type. Uh, it's about the drag force difference on the model. Uh, moreover, we added some extended model information. So you can right click on your model and get some information about the area or some other useful information. I will later on show it, of course, in an example. Uh, there are some new auxiliary objects, so you can add some comments or also dimensions to your model. And last but not least, as a feature I want to show today to you is the graphic model editor, which will allow you to directly model in our wind. So you do not need uh, CID software, or you can also use our wind besides using RFM6. And this allows you to create some models and as well to create a terrain with thickness vectors. Um, so whenever you also are curious in modeling the terrain and to have a knowledge on what uh, effect will the terrain ha have on your model and the wind flow, uh, then you can directly as well do this in our wind. So let's go to the first slide which is gathering some more detailed information. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, put some links on the top right of the slide. They can be clicked and you will then be directly guided to the topics of the online manual. And uh, these uh, newly introduced surfaces uh, are meant to be introduced for zones as a material. And you are uh, supposed to enter three parameters. So the Darcy coefficient, an inertial coefficient and the permeable media length in the flow direction. Uh, and you can see on the right how these uh, formulas are uh, put together. So it's about the permeability in square meters and some Froheimer parameter. Uh, of course, you will have some preset of data. So there is some standard of values introduced, but of course it's up to you to calculate uh, these parameters and to enter them for your zone. It's mainly meant to be a boundary condition uh, and it's a prescribed pressure drop on a defined surface, so front or end or behind. And uh, the main advantage we see in this permeable surfaces is 
that uh, it's no fine modeling necessary of your permeable structure. So you can imagine um, it allows you the simulation of uh, scaffolding tarpaulins, dust protection curtains, and or mesh constructions, which are usually on a quite thin structure, uh, thus leaving you with our 3D solid mesh to have a quite fine mesh, at least at these areas. And of course, you can go uh, wider um, the longer you are away from this um, construction. But still, this will increase a lot of uh, finite elements. And with uh, this definition of the permeable surfaces, you should get just rid of a fine modeling. And you can, of course, do your own uh, structures there. So I will now switch in my example files for this uh, feature. So on the top, you can uh, see uh, the velocity. And as well, in the bottom, it's scaled on the same uh, type and on the same number. And I've just used the example model, which is as well installed once you install the version. So if you are not aware of it yet, you can just go into the project manager and as well hit or switch to the demo folder. And there you can see already some examples which you can open. They do contain results and they do as well contain inputs. Uh, and I've just used this permeable surface. So on the top, if I um, switch or rotate it a bit, it's really from the model. Well, I usually tend to click on the bottom. So I clicked, of course, once again on the uh, lower model. Um, it's only an outer surface and an inner surface. And it is defined, as you can see, always on the bottom. So I will continue just on the bottom. Uh, it's having two zones, so a default zone and a green one. It's a permeable zone. And if you double click into the zone, you can see that the material two is here assigned for this uh, inner surface. And if we hit into the edit material dialog, you can see that uh, we now consider in here for this middle part, the permeability. And uh, I've in the lower file uh, not changed the preset of the end India. I've just increased the media length into the flow direction to 0.6 meters. And on the top one, to just have a quick comparison, I have uh, decreased it to uh, five centimeters. So what we now would expect, the thicker, of course, um, the permeable surface is in flow direction without changing the other parameters. Uh, the slower the uh, velocity should be in the back of the surface, so it's, of course, thicker. Um, so it should decrease my velocity. And I would just compare them once. And you can see then in the velocity drop uh, that on the thinner um, permeable surface, you have a higher velocity at the back side of the surface. So it's letting more wind going through or it's not slowing it down a lot. And if it's thicker on the bottom file, you can see that the velocity reduces, of course. And this will then more or less simulate uh, that there is some curtain or something in there which is blocking the wind. All right, so let's jump back into the slides and go to the next feature I already mentioned. It's the load factor for zones. So it's a post-processing factor by which uh, you can uh, increase or just multiply the load of a zone. And as already told, of course, it's able to be increasing or decreasing. You can also set it to zero. And I've, of course, prepared another example, uh, which already contains results because the calculation usually at least takes some seconds or some minutes, depending on how big your file is. Uh, but uh, I have already, of course, calculated them. So it's just a rectangular uh, building or just a structure uh, where I can see that I have a default zone in blue. So I did not touch this. And I have uh, defined some more zones. So I have a uh, half of my front. On the right side, it's uh, my right zone, it's green, and the left zone is yellow, and I have some purple stuff on the side. And then once you have defined these zones, so like having your permeable surfaces, you just can double click into the edit zone bar, and maybe you have already seen the factor in here. I've chosen for my right green side, so half of the front, that the factor should be 0.5. And compared to this, the factor on the left should be one that you, of course, see quickly that it's adjusting the results. And just by chance, by, I have raised the sides to two. 
And if you then check the simulation results, uh, you might already experience a color change in those zones. But the best thing is, of course, to evaluate them one by one. So hitting on the right zone and showing the drag force, you can see that this area is gathering uh, roughly 11 kilonewton. And if you hit onto the left zone, it's uh, 20.3 or 23 kilonewton. So it's doubled because we reduced the right side by a half. And you could, of course, also evaluate the sides. Uh, but this was just as an example that you can, of course, also adjust multiple zones. And the main focus for this is imagine that um, maybe the wind analysis has some weaknesses because if the steady calculation or stationary calculation can maybe not really uh, gather the suction at the backside of a building, you could uh, just uh, define a zone there and increase the value. Or if you think that you will have to add some special safety factor, you can as well increase it. Or if you think it's way over the top, you might decrease it. And then if you hand it over to RFM6, uh, the loads will also be then uh, with the factor. So you do not have to rearrange or to multiply them then later on in RFM6. I will go to the next feature. So it's also a quite interesting uh, evaluation feature. So the point clouds, these are most likely just some graphical objects which you can put in there. And this area contains a special amount of points which will be evaluated later on. And you can gather uh, the information of your streamlines. So maybe you're used to the streamlines to see uh, how the velocity changes or how the wind is flowing. And you can then also see some flowing particles only for the transient calculation. And those flowing particles, they can also be displayed at any time layer. I've also prepared an example. I hope my laptop will be cap capable of it. So it's a, a small wind tunnel uh, where I have a one meter opening at the front. So the wind will go inside there. And I have a 45 degree triangle uh, in the middle. And it will then be split uh, to two flow directions, one on the left, which is uh, one meter wall times one meter. And the one on the right is one meter times a half meter. And of course, with such a guiding uh, wall at the right, uh, because I wanted to see how the art, uh, particles will be uh, flowing uh, once I will guide my wind into this tunnel. Uh, it is important that you go into the simulation parameters if you want to track the particles as well and go into the particles tab. And there you have to uh, input the number of point clouds. So you can write one to three because we have three point clouds defined in this example. And you can hit that you want to track the flowing particles. Uh, once again, it's only available this particle flow for the transient calculation. And once you have results, so let's load the results for the streamlights shortly. Then you can see that uh, the graphic will be shown quite soon. Was faster, okay? So I have the flowing particles already activated. I will go to the streamline results. And then you can evaluate uh, how the wind is flowing. So you can see it from the start of the wind tunnel and even going to the end of the wind tunnel. And you can evaluate your point clouds um, one by one. So currently I am only displaying the flow through the left point cloud. And you can see that it's not only the middle of the wind going there, it's more uh, than the half. And this comes I assume since uh, we have this uh, smaller wind tunnel in here and it's blocking the wind a bit to the left. And then I guess the volume is also being pressured more to the left. Now we can as well in the streamlines also evaluate multiple point clouds. So we will add number two as well, which is the right one. It's the smaller one. And then you can as well check, of course, that uh, nothing from the left is going to the right currently, but all of the right and also less than the half is going to the right one. Uh, you can as well also have the front one being displayed, which will only, of course, show you the same wind flow. Uh, but this is just uh, for evaluation purposes. So you can check how the wind is going through. So I will uh, now switch to the flowing particles for the transient calculation. And uh, they are being displayed then at small bubbles. Let's hit cancel. 
Uh, you can, of course, also adjust the thickness. So I will increase it just a bit um, uh, in the size, I think, that you are better or that they are better visible for you. That's 50 and set OK. And uh, you can then animate them. So you can choose your own time layer if you want to with uh, this bar. So the master time layer is for this example at uh, 8 seconds 20. And you can also do a flow animation, which would then, of course, show you how these particles will behave. So you can see that they are more or less being created in here and then choosing their way to the left or the top, or uh, the right, of course. Uh, and you can also see the velocity. So they are more or less being put on the surface, uh, slow down a bit, but then being accelerated once again and flow through our animation. All right, so let's switch back to streamlines that it will not slow down my computer. <laughs> okay, so the next feature I want to show you uh, is the convergence. So you can, or you are maybe used to the residual graph, which is shown once you do the calculation. So it's of course doing or trying to find some uh, equilibrium. So the pressure which is put in the front of the wind tunnel should also be come out to the end of the wind tunnel. And uh, once it reach, reaches some value, so the standard value for pressure is uh, 1 times 0, 1 times 10, uh, or oh, 0 0.001. Uh, and uh, for the new track force, which is uh, related to the primary model, that's up to uh, 0 0.0001. So it's a bit lower. And for this um, uh, rectangular building, which is a bit angled into the wind direction, you can see at the back side that there will be some vortex. And for this one, you can see in the pressure drop that this will not really converge to the residual, which is set. So I have chosen to have 500 iterations. And even after 500 iterations, you will get the warning that it did not converge. And you have to check the results. Uh, and you can see the light blue, which is the drag force. You can see that this will reach the standard residual value uh, roughly about 340 iterations and then stop the calculation. This is of course only a convergence uh, and it's still up to you to check if uh, the results will then be usable or not. So this is my example. On the top side, you can see it's the convergence into P, so the pressure. So this is set in the simulation parameters for the steady flow in the residual type and also the target value. And if you hit or evaluate the residual, you can see in the top file, it did not reach the convergence. So it was set like this factor. And then you gain, of course, information and you can see that the drag force is this and the pressure is this on your structure. And on the bottom one, I have set that I want to have the drag force being our target value with the standard value which is introduced and it should maximally calculate 500 iterations. And you can see in the diagram on the bottom one that uh, as shown in the main one, it converged earlier. Uh, having a look on the factor you set. And if you then check the pressure drop or the pressure forces on it, you can see that uh, the track force is a bit lower. But still, uh, for this example, I would uh, have some more iterations because, as you can see, the track force is still falling, but it's not being most likely horizontal. So even if you add our standard criteria, it depends on the depth of the mesh uh, and as well on the structure, how many iterations you run. It's only most likely a stop of the calculation. So it might be that you still need some more um, iterations. So let's uh, jump to the next information I want to show you. It's the extended model information. So I'm showing the car, which is from the examples. And uh, we will provide some more information for this um, model. So the model area in total, the projected area in YZ. So it's in the wind direction and also in XY. So it's from top to down for the primary model and also for the simplified model. So the simplified, just to... Uh, Put it in a nutshell, is uh, the triangle structure, which is put as some overlapping structure over your model, which will then be put into the wind tunnel, because then you can give us some information about the pressure. And you can as well show the track coefficient uh, downwind from the primary model, so in the wind direction. So let's jump into the model. Uh, as meant, it's uh, just the one, so the uh, 
Volkswagen uh, from the examples. And if you then see and double click on the model, you just have to go into the info tab and then you can see the area. It's also, of course, available the dimensions for everybody who is not aware of it yet. If you want to check if your model is properly scaled, you can as well, of course, check the dimensions in there. And it's giving you some area in the projected directions and as well uh, the drag coefficient for your uh, model. Okay, so let's uh, go to the next feature. It's as well, of course, the golf displayed. Uh, these are the new auxiliary objects. So if you are giving a model to colleagues or to some customers, uh, you do not need to add these things then later on after doing some screenshots or taking a snapshot of the model and later on putting it in with some programs. Uh, now you are allowed to use dimensions, which can be put on models, so on objects or on the mesh surface. You can add comments free into the uh, area or also attached to objects. And you can measure distance as a polyline. And then you can measure distance between points uh, on the model and or the mesh surface. So let's also jump into this example. Uh, so this is the Volkswagen again, and it has a shark antenna. So you can see you can also switch the color. So if you double click on it, uh, you can also change the font. So you can make it transparent and you can add the frame and just hit OK. And of course, this will then be adjusted. So whatever you like, you can introduce there. And uh, you can also see that uh, we there have our dimensions. So let's just hit the navigator that you can see that these are introduced. So if it's mandatory for you to display some dimensions, uh, you can display them as you can see in here. And last but not least is the measure distance tool. So if you're uh, interested in how wide a screen is, uh, you can just hit it and try to hit some points of the triangles. And as you can see, it's a polyline, uh, which will give you a total length at the dialog of the line and as well the uh, the uh, different or separate line length. So it's quite useful to quickly measure on your object so you don't have to jump into the information, but you can see that this triangle is roughly 30 centimeters. Okay, so last but not least, uh, on my slide is the graphical model editor. So this is most likely newly introduced into Arwind as well. And this allows you to get rid of expensive uh, CAD software. Well, no, of course not. Uh, but it's a, a quite useful tool if you want to model easy objects. It's of course not that experience like AutoCAD uh, or Alplan or Arthem is, but uh, you can quickly uh, enter some objects like nodes, curves, surfaces, and solids, and even do some intersection. Uh, you can also use modeling tools which are known to you like copying, uh, moving it, rotating it, and mirroring it. And uh, also a main feature is that you do not have to create your terrain in a CAD software. You can create it quickly in Arwind. And if it's, let's call it simple uh, terrain, then you can define the topology based on graphic objects and thickness vectors. So let's jump into the example file. I just want to quickly show it in here because after that we will switch to create our own solar panels. So you can see that if you right click now on the model, you can insert a new terrain or a editable model. Uh, I already did this, so I will open this one in the model editor. And you can see that I have there a solid and I have the chance to insert objects like points, circles, lines, surfaces, solids, and so on. And I have also the option to move it, rotate it, mirror it, and also to intersect something. Intersect something. So if you already downloaded the version and you're curious why I have text besides my buttons, uh, it's a smart tool to activate this in the view tab where you can switch into navigator and see the edit bar options. And there you have the possibility to show the icons as well with the text, which is quite smart because while well, I'm not a graphic guy, uh, I also want to read what is written in there if you're just new to the program or not uh, used to the program. And then you can see the text, which is then explaining, of course, the symbols. So you have, of course, also the option to change or did your model. Uh, I will leave it as it is. 
And uh, as already told, you are also op you're also able to insert the terrain. So we can uh, also open this in the model editor, and then you can see also your <laughs> construction and that you have some thickness vectors in over here. And that's quite easy then. You can, of course, also define the amount or later on copy some more thickness vectors into the terrain uh, to simply modify the nodes. So if you double click it and you think that the thickness of the terrain is six meters in there, you just adjust it. Or if you are crazy and you put 20 meters in here just for visualization, you can see that you will have a small mountain and this uh, model would then be also taken for the wind tunnel and it can then be used as well as a lower boundary condition for your wind tunnel and the wind flow will then flow of course uh, and interact with the terrain and then be put on your building and it might be quite useful or necessary to also take into account the terrain maybe. All right, so this will most likely sum up the overview of the new features. Uh, time already passed as well. And now I want just to jump into the program by creating a new file. So let's go back into this one. Let's close it, don't save it. And I just opened the program now and we will go and hit a new project. Let me shortly open my file where I have my steps. Did I do not forget anything? And let's give it a name. I'm usually used to write my date in there. So it's already soon or close to Christmas today. <laughs> only some weeks missing and uh, well I will call it uh, solar my file I hope it's not named already and usually you would then hit the import model from a file or usually start start an RFM and transfer your model directly to Arwind uh, but I want to start with a blank sheet at the start so I would have to define my wind tunnel but I will just leave it as it is because I will later on adjust it to the model and then I have my clean or blank file. And uh, as already told, we also have a model library. And if you also want to reuse your model, you just have to go into the file tab and open the model library. So you can see, I have already, of course, tested myself in introducing my model. And there are some core models also already available. And in the model library, just hit the new button. So you can now use uh, a name. So let's call it Solar and 08 for the today's day and hit OK. Then uh, you will get a domain type. So the layout one will be for the terrain mainly and the general one is uh, for your normal 3D solid mesh. And you could as well already define an initial workspace. So we'll, we'll just, just leave it with the standard settings and then zoom out a bit. Uh, I'm usually not used to the perspective view, so I'm just doing the normal view. <clears throat> and the first thing I would do is to adjust my grid and workspace, because as you can see, the presets are half a meter, but I will just increase it to one meter. So it's just the dot, the distance of my dots. And then I can start to model a blank file. So I would just start with a line connected systems and my dimensions are now uh, 1 meter 80 times 1 meter 20. I could have of course uh, arranged my grid uh, to the measurements but I'm usually used <laughs> from RFM to just uh, create my rectangle and then I will move my stuff to the correct dimensions. So as you can see I have a 2 meter line. I can just uh, mark the line then and use of course the translate option. So the x direction is usually meant as the wind direction and I want to have it uh, be moved uh, 20 centimeters down so then I have 1 meter 80 and the next line is as well 1 meter only so I want to have 1 meter 20 in there so I'm going to translate this uh, into minus 0.2 into the global y axis and then I have my first rectangle so this should be some solar field uh, so I have one panel and I will now just mark everything and uh, translate it because the translate button also contains a copy option. So I want to have it uh, one meter 20. You can also use this cursor and gather the distance quite in the graphics, which is as well one meter 20. And I will use 11 copies and say, okay. And then I have already a half of my solar panels created. And I would then just 
mark everything and use my control key on the keyboard. So using the drag and drop uh, and copy paste it to the other side. Of course, I can go back again and use the mirror option. This depends, of course, uh, what you like, to be honest. So it's up to you using some or a lot of modeling tools. So I would just choose the plane, the XZ plane. It's, of course, to mirror it at the zero point, and I would do a copy. Uh, this will give you the same stuff. Well, I think drag and drop is easier for such a easy structure. So I'm used to do the drag and drop. So once you have it, uh, I will mark everything and create planar surfaces. Um, it's just giving me a dialog and information that uh, I've now 24 surfaces created. Uh, I will move them because they are standing a bit in the air. Uh, don't forget, if you only want to move, you have to remove uh, the number of copies, uh, 80 centimeters. And then I want to rotate them a bit because usually they are not laying horizontal. So I'm marking everything, uh, hit the rotate button, and I want to have it minus 30 degrees, no copy. It's the y-axis. So of course I want to rotate them into the wind direction. And since I moved them already, I have to pick at least my node in here. Um, it's also available only for Z, and then I, they will be put in 30 degree angle into the wind. Uh, it might also, if, of course, be not 30 degrees, then you might now save this model, um, put it back and create another model with 20 degrees if you want to do some parametric studies for your file. Um, this can or this could now as well already be used, so I would give the surfaces a thickness, but uh, arranging them easier in the wind tunnel, I propose just for this example to also add some columns uh, in the on the upside or the, on the bottom of these surfaces. So I will just for this example graphically split my lines. Now I want to divide it into n points. So I want to have five new nodes. You can of course use your measurements you have and then I want to have some perpendicular columns so they should just go down so you can now for example pick those nodes and copy them back down as one copy and later on uh, just adjust the z value that you have them laying directly on the ground you can imagine there are smarter ways or even faster ways but i'm usually used to do some quick geometric stuff and then i want to have a uh, quite thick columns just for an example, to have 20 times 20 centimeter columns. I will use this, press Ctrl Z and Ctrl V on my keyboard, uh, which is quicker, most likely, than the translate stuff, but the translate offers some more options. But if you just want to quickly copy some notes, like me, uh, I want to copy it in this direction, uh, then I can do this because I want to create a rectangle. So. From my point of view, uh, the quickest way to do so is to move your nodes to create the outer edge node of your uh, rectangle. And then you can just enter it as a surface. You can known to RFM6, just mark it, hit control, pick the node in the middle and move it to the left. And now we want, of course, to have the interaction to the top, which is then curved or angled. And I will use my surfaces and extrude them. So it's up to you to just extrude them a bit higher than the current surfaces are. So now they are solids. I don't need them for my example. So I'm going to delete them as well as the top surfaces and this middle line. I don't need it for further modeling. And then I will use my intersections of the lines, which will give me then the connection points where my where my column is going through my angled surfaces. And I would then just quickly move by drag and drop my nodes down, just to fulfill that the columns will of course end at the bottom of my example. So there are various possibilities to do so, but well, I gathered that or I expected that this is the fastest one for me. All right, so now I have uh, in the middle of my solar panel, uh, like having a satellite, some columns, so I will mark them and then copy paste them by hitting the control key on the keyboard on the places where I need them. And of course, I do not want to have my columns standing uh, out of my um, solar panels, so I will use them. 
I will use them, yeah, I will mark them. And I would the translate button and I want to create one copy and I use my move tool. So this outer edge node should maximally go to this node. And then I do not want, of course, to move it into X or Z direction because I only need to move it into the Y direction. And if you do so, you can see that it's now uh, there. So I have my col columns for half of the structure. Now I'm going to mark them once again and only to mirror them into the XY plane and my copy is still checked and I hit OK. And then you can see that uh, I have now uh, modeled my columns beneath the solar panel. So what I am finally going to do is to give my panels some thickness. This can also be done with uh, the tools. So I will extrude the surfaces perpendicular to their um, angle. And I will use uh, a thickness of uh, 10 centimeters and say, OK. All right, so that's it for this model. And then you just have to hit Save. And you can close it. So we saved it into the model library. So we are going to insert a model now from the library. And there is our Solar 08. And then take care that uh, you do not check that it will be adjusted to the dimensions of the wind tunnel. So this option is mainly meant if you already have your model and you want to insert some other objects um, that it will be scaled. But we will have or we want to have our solar panels in the correct shape. So if you double click on them and hit the info button, it should have the area which you will expect. So it's now introduced and I first double click on it and tell it that I want to have a level of detail of four. You can see later on uh, what this will do. And then I want to have it uh, nine times in a row. Before I do that, I just want to arrange my wind tunnel. So the flow domain to be adjusted to my model standing on the bottom and hit OK. So it's then of course arranging or readjusting the wind tunnel to your dimensions. So what we now did is, if I quickly only for this one panel show the simplified model is that we have then our simplified model around it. It's not that smart. You can see it's closing some gaps. But for a quick estimation of the wind forces on my panels, it's quite useful. I will uncheck it again. And then I will hit my solar panels. And I will use the move along vector. And I will move it 3.1 meters into X. And I want to have double check nine copies, of course. Say OK. And then you have quickly your solar field with a gap between them that some people can walk through if they have to clean them. And um, you can then once again hit the flow domain and adjust it standing to your models in the ground. So it's usually adjusting the standard sizes. You can then, of course, introduce your simulation parameters. So I will keep the standard stuff. Usually would, of course, then go and define a wind profile according to your stand, uh, to your location, uh, which can in our wind only be put in manually. If you use it with RFM, you can see that you can define the wind profile by your own. And it's listed according to our GeoZone tool. So I did not do any big changes in the simulation parameters. And I have, of course, already calculated it once. So let me hit into the webinar and hit it without the terrain. And you can then later on see, of course, that for your different solar panels, you can see that you will get your track force, the pressures, depending on the color scale. And if you check then the velocity field, hopefully it's not loading that long, you can see that the first one is working like, let's call it a car spoiler. So <laughs> it's uh, rearranging the wind to flow over the panels. So the first one will get a higher wind track force, of course, and the other one are standing uh, like in the shadow of them. Let's call it like this. So behind the first panel. Let's see if it's loading quite long. It's quite bigger file, of course. Laptop is already making some noise. Oops, maybe I should have closed the other examples. OK, so there it is. So the scale is a bit uh, misleading, maybe. So 
if you hit uh, some other ways in here, well, I will not rearrange it. You could see that, of course, the wind is then being redirected from the first panel quite over all other panels. Okay, so let's close this with examples. And now I want to introduce my terrain. So I just hit uh, right uh, click on the model and I introduce a new terrain. You can give it a name or not, uh, depends on you. And then you have to type an initial shape in there. So what I want to do is to have it from minus 45 meters up to minus five meters. I did of course priorly checked where my model is standing and I do some inputs for my thickness vectors. Uh, I only want to have some stair terrain, so I do not need a lot into the Y direction. And I hit OK. And then you can check from the side uh, to see where the solar panels are standing. And in our example, I just want to raise a half of this terrain with the thickness vector to be moved half a meter top. Yeah, half a meter top. So if you're entering, of course, it with a dot, then it's not giving you the warning. And the last three ones should also be moved half a meter on the top. So you can see with this terrain ed editor, you can just quickly arrange a staircase uh, terrain, or if you have some other crazy shape, you can of course also use those thickness vectors. And I will save it. And now it's of course laying somewhere. So I will once again adjust the flow dimensions and say OK. And then I would just, or it's leaving me just to move my main solar panels a bit higher because I have entered a minimum thickness of one meter of the terrain. So I would just move them along a vector. So I will not create a copy this time. And I just firstly move them one meter higher. And the last six will also be moved uh, half a meter. And well, so of course using the comma and uh, entering them once half a meter ago. So as you can now see, I have a staircase of the terrain. So the first ones are standing down half a meter higher, three ones, and once again, half a meter higher, three ones. So the calculation with this detailed uh, mesh took roughly an hour, but I did of course already create uh, or calculate results with the terrain. So you have to trust me. Uh, but you can see from the side that, of course, I have this staircase terrain. And then you can see that the drag force uh, of the front panel, which are, which are lifted a bit higher, uh, of course, changed a bit. And this gives you most likely an option to take into account the terrain. So sometimes this might be necessary and sometimes it's maybe not necessary. But this is up to you. And uh, this can be done mainly also in our wins down below. Okay, so let's uh, leave Armin standalone because the time is running, but we are quite good in time. I would just quickly close uh, my Armin stuff uh, that my computer will not crash down. Okay, and let's go into Arfem. So this is the model. This will be later on as well be uploaded on the website. And this one is main, maybe known to you from the seismic analysis. So I did not create a new model. I did just modify it. It's a reinforced concrete building with some steel attachment. Let's call it like this. And I have uh, used our node transfer surfaces because uh, I will have some facade, which is only giving the wind loads to the down structure and not giving any stiffness into my structure. So for my purpose, I will use those purple surfaces. And I have, of course, then defined maybe if some members are not carrying loads like those uh, tension members in here, or if my uh, only couplings should get some force or not. So this is the stuff I have introduced. And mainly I will now show you what inputs can be done to our wind and RFM6 directly. So the first one is of course to activate the wind simulation as an add-on in your add-ons. And then you go for a location. So I have chosen Leipzig to be the location which is already loaded in our model. And then you could already here define a terrain. So if you're not doing anything in here, the zero Z plane would, will be a horizontal plane. You can enter some offset plane in here as a 
checking maybe some parts of your model only, or if it's uh, standing somewhere higher or lower. You can also have an incline plane defined directly in RFM6, or you can enter some table values. I think this was already once shown in another webinar, which can then be as well be seen on our website as a record. So for our example, I would not for this purpose use a terrain. Uh, so I have now defined my location and then I will have to go into a new load case. I will of course use now a wind load case and have the analysis type wind simulation. This will give me some more tabs on the top and then I usually it's intended to work from left to right. So the first thing you can set is the wind simulation analysis setting. So you can just hit to edit them and we will not uh, divert into the steady flow or transient flow because I think this was already shown once in a webinar. Uh, but you can then of course adjust values if it's necessary for you. So those are then of course being transferred into Arvind. And you can as well also adjust the turbulence model and some other parameters which are put to Arvind. So we will just leave it with the standard settings. You can also jump into Arvind. So if you want to double check how the structure is going to look. Well, of course, we have to define some other stuff for it before, then you can click this button. And uh, you can also create a new wind profile. So if it's user defined, we could enter something like an R wind, or we can now choose uh, our standard according to the German uh, location we have set. And then you can see that the table values of velocity will automatically be calculated and the turbulence intensity. Mr. Niemeyer did also provide a smart technical article about the dust principle, I think, according to the German standard, which is available also on our website. You can as well print these graphs into the printout report if you want to, but we will create it later on. So we will just define the wind profile, hit OK, and we will leave the zero degree direction. And well, you could as well, if you want to adjust the wind tunnel. So if we would put this into the wind tunnel, uh, it will put everything what is visible into it. So we would have uh, most likely our member shapes being on the outside, but we only want to have our surface being transferred. So what we now need to do is to go into the calculation and the mesh settings. And there is a new tab if you have the add-on activated, which is called wind simulation, where you can choose if you want to close openings, have a level of detail, uh, or add also an IFC file as terrain or a surrounding model, or as well consider the surface thickness or run it in the silent mode. We don't want to run it in the silent mode. Uh, and we want only to export visible objects. So if we now want only to have our surfaces, the quickest way from my point of view is to activate a visibility where you display all members. So you can see only members now. And then I go and show the re reverse visibility. So now I can only see, uh, as you can see, hopefully my surfaces and this outer shape will be given to our wind. Uh, we have now defined one wind direction. So the next way might be that you just copy your wind direction and enter some degree or some certain uh, rotation of your model in here. And you can see that of course the load will rotate. The quickest way to do it is uh, the, um, the wizard. So I think um, you can just create a new load wizard for your wind simulation and this will do it automatically for you. So you don't need to copy, enter a new number, copy, enter a new number. Uh, you will just add your wind simulation analysis, analysis settings. You enter your wind profile and then it will create all the load cases. So 10 degrees is maybe a bit high. Let's do 45 degrees. And then this will create all the load cases for you if you hit OK. So this will save you a lot of time. Uh, we will not uh, calculate them in this file. <laughs> OK. So I've just quickly create a new printout report. Uh, there was already a webinar about it. So it is now also being able to be modified uh, once RFM is opened. And uh, whoops, let's open it. There you can of course then evaluate uh, your data. I will not show how you can multi-print something in there. Uh, but I would just want to show that you, of course, can print your wind profile in there. 
So if you are displaying it, you can just print it into the printout report. Uh, you can get a preview of it and you can hit save and show. And you can see that the pictures are smartly printed into the printout report. All right, so we will not run the analysis now in the program. I have, of course, already results for my file because this will as well take some moments to calculate. And once you have uh, finished the calculation, you can, of course, also evaluate the results in Awesome. They are then being transferred, transferred back into the program. So we will now have our normal wind load, which is put on the building so you can see the deformation. Or the best thing to check is that you can also check the distribution of loads, which is yet uh, available. Let's call it only for surfaces, of course, and not the transfer surfaces. But if you want to evaluate the results of your members, you can just also go back, cancel the visibility mode, and check the member forces, so maybe the global deformations. So I have quite a big load going sidewards on my own member, so I may now think about adjusti adjusting my static system or maybe the load transfer, how it is put on my surface, because I think I've not excluded the top bar, but the facade might be fixed to the outer edges, and then, of course, the load will be gone. And you can, of course, also see then the internal forces like the shear force, so the uh, force into that direction, which is then put from the facade from our load transfer surfaces, as I have defined it in here, only to the columns. And this will then, of course, be available in your static analysis. All right, so this is most likely what I wanted to show you, how to use RFM6 with our wind. So more information can as well be gathered on the website. Uh, what I now remember is that I missed to show you that you can, of course, as well print stuff <clears throat> from Arwind into the clipboard and use it for documentation. But the printout report in RFM is quite better, most likely, because it, this is meant to calculate the wind loads, get an estimate, and using it with RFM 6, or maybe do your own graphic snapshots in here and to document it. All right, so I will jump back to my presentation because uh, I'm going or I'm coming to an end with my content and I want to show you the prospect, what is planned in our development. This will not be ready in days, but well, this is just uh, the way abroad, how it's called. And we are planning to import as well experimental wind tunnel test data in order to be capable to validate your investigations because it's a quite controversial topic if it has to be the loads according to the euro code, for example, or not. Um, but the best way, of course, to validate uh, a finite element analysis is to have a real model. <laughs> That's uh, the only <laughs> way leaving it to you or to have a fully a solution for something. Uh, this should also be able then to be transferred as uh, or to the transfer the test data back to RFM6 as well. So this will save you a lot of time if you have a wind tunnel des test data that you do not have to enter a lot of uh, nodal loads maybe um, to get your wind tunnel data into RFM6. The next big part is that uh, we plan to have a time step calculation, which is as well already be possible with the transient calculation, but to have it uh, being transferred back to RFM6 and to combine it with the time history analysis so that you can maybe check if uh, your structure um, is swinging a lot uh, over the time and uh, if you have to take some more uh, construction steps to fix it or not. And last but not least, of course, this is not a full prospect, it's just uh, some highlights I want to show or mention. Uh, we want to have an envelope of the results. so maybe for all time steps that you own, do not only check the master time layer, but multiple time steps and see where are the maximum and minimum forces and or to have it for different wind directions, which will then be easier for you to evaluate. All right, Andreas, uh, I think <laughs> I'm some minutes ahead, but well, I will hand back now to you. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I think we are quite in time. Um, before we close the webinar, I would like to show you where you can find the recording of today's webinar. Uh, in the next days, I take over the screen to my screen. Just a moment. 
On our website, bluebile.com, you can find under news and events, the webinars. Yeah, I've, I hope you know that we record all our webinars. You will find the uh, yeah, accomplished webinars and so on. And upcoming webinars, you can filter as well in, on, on the left side here. So that's uh, an upcoming webinar. I search for the webinar of today. That's today's webinar. If you click on it, you will find the recording in the next days here. You will go also um, get an email with your certificate and the link to that page here. And there will be the recording and you already can download the presentation slides and the models. If you don't have our wind already you can uh, download the free trial version here above free trial version you can download the trial version of rfm6 and our wind 2 and go through the webinar with the provided models that you can download okay that's also all from my side i thank you for your attention Thanks to Stefan for the presentation. Thanks to Andreas for answering the question or questions. Um, before we close the webinar, just the last hint. When you leave the webinar, there is a small survey. You can score us. Uh, I think it takes only one minute or so. You can enter your wish for future webinars or what we can improve and so on. If you don't enter or don't want to enter anything, yeah, just leave it empty or enter a minus or something, a sign like that. Okay, then I wish you all a nice rest of the day and bye-bye.